experience of the void. Hi Christina, welcome to the void. I've got a very special episode tonight which is sort of distilled down deep moments with a really special artist who I love spending time with, Devin Townsend. And this is really for the fans out there, I think Devin Townsend fans are as cool as Devin. Um, and you know, the music is a reflection of that as well. So. I wanted to put together some deep stuff um, that we've spoken about um, and I just want to thank everyone who has commented on my Devon stuff in the past. Um, there's been some comments that have really moved me as someone who has their own experiences with mental illness um, and mental health um, to know that there's other people out there who got something out of our discussion it really means a lot. So first of all a little moment with Devon about um, using music as his primary form of emotional expression. When I was younger, uh, whether or not it was uh, a conscious thing, I think I just, uh, I stopped being able to really connect with, with the emotional components of life in, in any other way other than that. So it's all sort so of- through music. Yeah. That's so how you express your emotions and almost, get, almost get everything out. Almost exclusively, like almost wow. exclusively. So now it's, it's uh, I feel like in life it's pretty flatlined, but that still is his avenue that is is really Colorful. and authentic too. So, if somebody in my family's died or you know kids are being born or or life in general, yeah. there's this um, this outlet that that when I do write it it's 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 completely um, free. And it's open. It's almost like you've oiled the channel so well totally. from your hand to your brain sort of totally. thing. Totally. The funny thing is is because music is is uh, both really uh, simple for me on that level and not significant either because it is yeah. simple, when I do deal with people, my frustrations with, with musicians are just really, uh, because I'm just like, well, it goes like this. <laughs> like, I mean, how, why is it, why are we like, you know, specifically, yeah. with, specifically <laughs> with people who think of things in terms of like a real linear, you know, one, two, three, four, I'm just like, I don't know, like, like, it goes like this, right? In this particular segment, we talk about weathering darkness. We're not designed to be happy all the time. That's not the human experience. I've been writing about melancholia and darkness and mania and all of the interesting extremes of the human experience. We've been writing about it for thousands of years. We're, we're not a sunny people, like, we're not a sunny species. Yeah, we're that's dark true. Motherfuckers. Well, like, and I also think yeah. we're flawed, right? So oh, it's deeply. like, yeah. uh, makes it difficult to sort of keep um, a frame of mind that is optimistic, yeah. let alone like positive, right? But I, uh, but I also think, I mean, even with the nature, the, the record, um, the empath thing was, uh, you know, I was really uh, depressed during the, the making of it, right? Yeah. And um, I think that that helped it in a sense because uh, if you're speaking about um, persevering through, through all that, negativity and you're coming from a place of like well I'm having to actually do that as opposed to all you got to do is think positive man I don't know what your problem is Wait. I think it's, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like if you if you can come from the perspective of like no it's fucked yeah, yeah it's really like, well you got to there's really a whole hard. theory of like you got to sit in it man like you you actually one of the biggest things um, is like learning how to sit in the emotion but not let it take you over like oh. almost like weather oh, like okay. I've I feel like that like if I'm like in a dark place or whatever I'm like and it's taken a lot of work to get to the point where you're like this is not me I know it feels like a serrated edged thing and I feel like you know it's almost like corrosive feeling this is not me it feels like shit right now but like it's it's gonna go like that's the nature of the beast yeah it doesn't it will never last forever. That doesn't make it easy on this No, 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 for it's sure. It's dark shit, yeah. No, I get it. I mean, I also uh, heard and I like the idea that, um, uh, you know, uh, just sort of watching your emotions rather than letting them identify you, but not, yeah. not necessarily trying to quell them. I think this is what I um, started seeing as, as uh, a recurring theme for me is there were certain aspects of my creative identity or personal identity that I uh, feared yeah. You know, for whatever reason, it, yeah. childhood trauma or, or what have you. And and then I found that as opposed to uh, letting them in and just sort of sort of shining a light on them and trying to figure out why I was afraid of them, I just kept pushing them away. And then it's, they, they, you know, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? Like monsters. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That was the whole idea. So the whole I, 
But the whole idea with um, with this particular creative moment, I guess, was was just like, okay, well, how do you how do you have um, compassion? Is such an overused word, but how do you have compassion for the parts of you that have been hurt, right? And as opposed to being like, well, you're a bad you're a bad child or you're a bad person, like. How do you invite it back in and say, okay, well, how do we fix this as opposed to anything else? And I find that it's almost like it just needs to have a voice. But if you, have a, if you let it have a voice, the, the risk is letting that voice like, um, uh, become your identity, right? Here, we talk about his journey from Strapping Young Lad to here. I put on like the first song you ever released. Like the structure and yeah, yeah. and then put, went back to this, and it it took me. It was dark, man. Mm. Like if you go back to there, and it's like when you come back to here, it's almost like you know you've talked about in that interview series, which I thought was fantastic. I would have never thought that a telephone conversation, and pictures, and a little bit of music, yeah. even though the, they're actually the things I paint with, sure. would work like that, and they really do. I gotta give like, credit to Zim who did yeah. the documentary there. It's he, a cool idea. Yeah, it was really a great idea. But you know, I think it's interesting. It's, um, uh, uh, I think you've got, in order to be able to uh, speak with any sort of authority on things that are, uh, you're trying to help, which is ultimately, I think, my goal and yeah. yours too, clearly. Yeah. I mean, I think if, you're, if your intention is that to not have experienced that dark doesn't give you a frame of reference for it. And I think a lot of times that's where I find it falls flat for me when, when the whole, you know, all you got to do is uh, think positive. But I think um, I think that in opposition to that sort of idea of just um, thinking positive to the exclusion of anything in the world that's negative or anything in your own yeah. reality that's negative, I think that ultimately all you're going to be speaking to is other people who feel like that. This is a bit of a dip into the archives about fate, free will, faith, and Carl Jung. I was thinking about last night, and I was thinking about like the whole concept of failure, and and you know I often get into these these discussions with people about uh, fate versus free will, and yeah. the thoughts of like agnostic and atheist and religious yeah, yeah. and all these sorts of things, and and I mean, I just think it's so beyond me that I I, I have to classify myself as agnostic. I'm that, the same way. Like, how can we know? Well, that's it. How can we know? Right? How arrogant to think uh, that we know? Do you exactly. know what I mean? It's such an ego-driven thing. That's exactly. It's specific when people. Exactly the same way. They're like, oh, there's no God. I'm like, how do, how you, do know? you know? You know what I mean? And they're like, well, there is a God. I'm like, well, how do you know? I mean, so the whole idea of Carl Jung with, with the oh, sense dude. that all yeah. of human experience is like, is like, in connected yeah. in a way so that you it's have to learn to fail. Yeah, 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 it is. It is in a sense. And you have to learn to fail, yeah. And, and maybe even more than fate because that sounds a little dogmatic. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I like the idea of cause and effect, yeah. right? And it's like, you know, these decisions that were made at this point in your life send you it closes that door and opens this one. One of the things I love about Devon is his constant state of evolution. And I think one of the coolest things about Devon Townsend fans is how much support they've given him to pursue all sorts of avenues. Um, and risk taking is what this is about. What's the most satisfying risk you've ever taken? Um, Where you just kind of said, yeah, whatever, I'm going. Failing, I think. Because I think there's, if you've never had the opportunity really fail publicly like, just what you, what crash and burn right yeah. uh, last night was a good example for me it's like everything that could possibly go wrong uh, technically did and it's it's but as a result of having to having to be forced to cope with those things yeah. it teaches you mechanisms that you wouldn't have if you hadn't been thrust into that and so it does, it's almost like it builds new, yeah, exactly, totally. the ability to be able to, you need to fail because otherwise how will you ever be able to fail? Totally. And it's kind of freeing to fail, really. Uh, well, it is, like uh, it's, I'm it's not, in the, not in the interim, right, but I yeah. mean, but I think it's, it's, there's no chance of success if you're not willing to make that, that, that failure, right? But I mean, I also have uh, several friends that have been in bands that have been viewed as perfect since their genesis. Perfect. And as a result of that, in a way, uh, there's like like I sense almost like a certain level of fear where they're just like oh my god I, I can't I can't yeah. fuck up because there's a lot invested in being perfect. This last moment of this particular video, um, thanks for seeing it all the way through, is about 
Epic Loud, which is an album that he dedicated to the experience of long lasting love and committed love and not that explosive moment, but um, something deeper um, that really matters and takes work. I think it's really interesting to do a record with a like with a central heart of 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 re what you know a marriage and real love and what totally. because re love is not love is not that explosive moment at totally. the beginning it's not lust it's not that thing it's something so much more interesting and the thing about love for me like is it's not static and we all expect it to be static and expect it to be but it, like it waxes and wanes that's like it. that's it and it's it's something that I'd be really interested to hear how you would translate to music well I mean I think it's like learning to compromise and uh, commit are two things that I think there's a lot of strength to be had from it. And I guess what I'm trying to do with like heavy music in this instance with Epicloud is to try and make, you know, what typically is, you know, used to maybe make really negative sort of like musical statements, right? Not negative might not be the best word, but yeah. like aggressive, yeah. right? Grr. Yeah, totally. But I mean, I think that the, the effort and the power that it takes to like, stay committed or like to work through problems you know what i mean if they and, happen oh yeah and it's like your first instinct is like fuck it you know i was gonna open the front door and run you know this is I mean? too hard i'm oh, not gonna yeah. that's it but but that's you know it. what it's yeah. totally worth it that is and i think and i think what's worth it about it is just because it's like anything that you that you're able to work through you learn more about your own you know capacity to uh to handle things and and to grow and all this and i mean like having kids or or like being in a long-term relationship or anything like this is you know it's hard right and i know there's there's a lot of folks i know they're just like oh you know i didn't work so i left or you know we had a bunch of kids and i wasn't into it or whatever right and i mean that's totally an option too it's definitely not a judgment call based on that because who knows but for me what i have found for myself is typically i've not been a very dis disciplined person and i and i, I find that you know if i you know, committing to things, whether or not it's people or music or, or whatever, you eliminate so many of the options. And then once that's out of the way, you can focus. Thanks so much for watching. Um, it was a privilege to spend time with him. And I'm always thinking about you and, you know, getting something out of these conversations that's meaningful to you. So um, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe. May your day or night be most triumphant. This is an experience of the void.